Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 2 and today I'm going to be giving you Part 7 of What If Naruto Was an Outcast Uchiha in the time of the Sonnings Remember to hear this one to 100 likes as usual Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform And also guys Go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto dreamed to surpass the gods on Anime King 3 and enjoy that guys. And also over in Anime King I post a brand new episode of what if Naruto was taken and awakened godly red lightning and enjoy that guys. And remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying talking about to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what do you see we leap right into this new episode start? The intro. So the last time we left off, Sasuke left his three Jennings to complete a rather life-changing mission as he took them towards the bandit camp and left them there. They steal themselves as Naruto moved forward as Sakamo and Dai asked him if he was really going to do this but they had no choice but still it was taxing to do so. As they walk, they slip through the camp rather silently. As they got to the main tent, as they stood over their targets, the man I shuffle a bit as Naruto brought his blade down, die and Sakamo performed the same move as he killed their opponent. Naruto dropped towards his butt as the blood splashed on him, as he started to hyperventilate until the three boys were knocked out. Sasuke was the ones that brought them back, as Naruto was the first to wake up. Sasuke spoke to him and he consoled Naruto through and through and he was able to get him through the difficult point. He did the same for the other two boys and he told him about his other mission if he had failed this one. He was supposed to bring them towards the other mission. As he told him it was going to be unlike anything they've seen before but they agreed as a group to go so they went. It was then they came upon war. Most of the civilian population well all of them and the younger generation did not know that they were currently in the midst of a war. The higher ed ups had been hiding it away from them but now as Sakumo thought about it the shipping, all the containers that they brought back to Kanoha, they were stocking up for war. It made sense as Naruto saw a man. As Naruto rushed out, not listening to Sasuke as he went to give the man some water. However Sasuke arrived and drive a corner through the man's skull. It was then that Naruto saw the kunai that the man was going to use and kill him. Sasuke proceeded to tell him that the moment the man saw his headband he saw him as the enemy and even while he was dying he was going to try and take him down. As Naruto was a bit shaken up but he kind of understood after a while. The three of them returned back to Kanoha a different set of Jennings than before. Sasuke made his way towards Toborama something was wrong. Snad so parents have been kidnapped. The information was not well known yet, no one knew it except for him. They had went to get some rare herbs and they were kidnapped. The Raikage was the one that was behind this. This was bad. And Toburama was gonna go. But Sasuke was gonna go with him no matter what. As he told him that he will come out of this alive. He will not die. As the man breathed a sigh of relief. As his friend gave him back some confidence that he was really lacking. Two days later, he was placed on his armor. Both of them was. As they headed out, the right Kage and several of his top ninjas were waiting. They want to break the morale of Kanoha. They want to crush it. They want to shred it to pieces. While that was going on, 
Naruto and Tsunade was making their way until Dai arrived, followed by the others. It turns out that Dai finally tried to to master to train him, however, the man said that he was not youthful enough. As that pissed, Naruto and the others off, as they were going to find this guy and teach him a lesson or two. Even Tsunade was pissed off, how could he say that Dai was not youthful? Dai, a fall person. Meanwhile, that was going on. Tobiram and Sasuke finally arrived. As they came face to face with the group, they could feel the man coming from the bushes as they waited. As he then came out, something confused them though because the Raikage was smiling warmly at them. But they knew that this was not going to be an easy task, as they could feel the strong Kage Level Ninjas, two of them around him, and several Jonins in the bushes. The man came here to kill them. And they will have to fight. With everything they got here, this was rather dangerous. So yeah guys, basically let's pull it off you guys can switch across the place of yourself and what do you say we just leap right into this new episode without wasting more time guys. Begin now. This is a dojo guys. Said Dai as he led his three friends behind him. As Snaddy looked around the dojo. It was then that her ponytail shot up in the air. As she felt something roaming around her hips, her palm opened up wide as she spun around. Pervert she screamed, followed by a loud, slapping sound. The boys rushed over to where she was. As they saw Snaddy's face flush from anger and pure embarrassment. Snaddy said Naruto, what happened? She pointed her finger toward the smoking wall. As there was a man embedded in it, an old man that was twitching rather violently. Sensei said Dai as he tried to wake the dizzy old man up. That pervert is your sensei, said Snaddy. As Dai nodded, causing Sakamo and Naruto to sigh. Of all the luck in the world, you have the best. Luck of them all, Dai, said Sakamo. His voice laced with sarcasm that Dai didn't seem to pick up on. See, isn't he most youthful, said Dai. Snaddy reached over as she picked Dai up by his collar. You want this pathetic pervert as your teacher. She got a nod in return. You're better off without him. As the old man got to his feet. Is this the feast you got me for your apprenticeship? Then I accept, he said. His voice sounded rather jovial. As Snaddy's eyes started to twitch violently. You wish, you old pervert. Come on now, she said. We're leaving. As she started to pull him away until Naruto had held onto her wrist. Calm down, Snaddy, he said. This man is a real deal. As Naruto's eyes looked towards the old man who dusted himself off. Sakamo spoke next, yeah, he got behind us even when I had my senses expanded and Naruto isn't half bad if someone approaches that close. Not saying you're a sensor like me too, Snaddy. That made her blink in realization as she didn't know until she felt something. Yeah, I give him a chance. He's not half bad to die. She let him go with a pout. Whatever, just keep him away from me. I bet you wouldn't mind if Naruto did that. A voice whispered in her ear. As the reaction was instant, her cheeks turned beet red. Before she could say anything, Sakamo turned his head, already a few feet away, as he was whistling, quite innocently. She clenched her fists and opened them, doing it a few times to calm herself down. It just wasn't her day. What do you kids want? The old man said. Aren't you the one I told off yesterday? Now go. Don't waste my time anymore, he said. Why don't you want to train him? Sakamo asked. Because he's not worth it, the old man said, as Dai's shoulder slump. Tch, let's go Dai, said Naruto. You don't need a teacher who takes on students seeing their potential firsthand. If it was one thing that he hates, it was people like this who looked down upon people. Master Shen eyes twitch at Naruto words. Those damn Uchiha's knew how to pick someone apart without even knowing what they did. Aren't you full of yourself, the old man said. Naruto ignored him and continued to walk away. Wait! As Naruto came to a stop, as he looked the man in the eyes, let's place a bet, so to speak, as Naruto raised the eyebrow. You, spar with me. If you defeat me and show me how worthless I am, I'll teach that boy everything I know. And what if I lose, said Naruto? Then you drop to your knees and bow your head and tell me that I'm the best teacher you ever saw in your entire life, and I will still take him on as my apprentice. As Naruto looked at the man to decline, would this honor his mother figure? The best, 
sensei that he knew. The one that taught him the ways. But this man. Something just didn't seem right about him. He might look old and rather simple to beat. But Naruto could tell that something was up. Not to mention his honor was at stake here as well. Fine, you have a deal. But you apologize to die too if I lose. Very well. The both of them shake hands. As they stepped in. Naruto, be careful. His Taijutsu is said to be greater than the Hokage himself. Dai whispered word about his friend. As Sakamo was word as well, he knew more than anyone. Pride was something Naruto placed rather high in his life. Snelly was word, but she knew that he would not back down. No matter how much she tried to convince him, he was even more stubborn when someone talked about his pride and honor. Despite the age of the house show on the outside, the dojo was well kept on the inside, well proper in manner. Alright, let's get started, the old man said joyfully. As Nurt removed his sandals so they would not slow him down in the dojo's slim floor, the rule shall be quite simple. If you hit me once, you win. You have until the sun goes down the horizon to achieve that feat. The group was shocked by that. You you can't be serious, Snelly said in disbelief. But the man simply smiled. That's nine hours. You simply expect him to not hit you at least once, Sakumo said. Stunned by the confidence that this man has. No matter how strong his Taijutsu was, Naruto was no slouch. And that wasn't to say how lethal he can be if he releases his Sharingan in battle. Something that he tried to avoid using on any fellow villagers, if he could. We'll just see at the end of the day, now won't we? The man said in a mocking tone. Naruto dropped into the first cut of the Uzumaki style, drilled into him by Mito. It was a defensive style as he really wanted to see if this man was dangerous as he claimed to be. However, the man dropped into a weird stance. He went on his tippy toes as his leg was spread apart in a strange way, not too far but not too close. His right arm at his side his left arm out, mocking Naruto to come first. Is he mocking me? Naruto wondered. As the man's body was relaxed, like Naruto wasn't even a threat. Come now, child. What are you waiting for? The chance was big, and he could not waste it. The man's stance was loose, and he was easy to hit. Naruto could already see several points. His body shot towards the man at blazing speeds. As he jumped and twist, as he brought his leg around. However, the man reached up and catch Naruto's leg. There was no vibration. It was almost like Naruto did not even touch him. The man then squeezed. Naruto was. Shock! It felt like a vice grip had grabbed onto his leg and held on tightly as he twisted his body and threw a punch towards the man's shoulder. The old man seemed just lean back as the punch fly past him harmlessly. However, he did loosen up his grip on Naruto's leg as Naruto seized the moment and crouched as he tried to swat the man's leg away. But Master Chen just jumped up before he came back down. The man stomped up on Naruto's leg. As Naruto's eyes widened, it felt like the man had hit him in a certain point. He sent Chakra to loosen the weight that just dropped on his leg. However, the man used a force to pierce right through his Chakra and brought down more pressure as Naruto closed his eyes in pain. But that was a big mistake. As Naruto crossed his arms, a burst of Chakra and the full brunt of the force hit him right in his cross arms. His body was thrown as he crashed rather hard. As Ned and Sakumo watched as Naruto rocket past them and slam in the wall with a bang. Naruto, Snedi called out as they rushed towards him. Naruto brought his arms down. A few of his bones must be a bit cracked right now. Nothing too bad like broken because he enforced him with chakra, but still, the man's strength was lethal. And he couldn't get his hands to stop shaking. Snelly hands started to glow green. Kami, Naruto, there's cracks in your bones, she said. His hair was covering his eyes. She looked up as she saw him smirking. He caught her hand in his own, stopping her healing. I'm fine, said Naruto as he started to get up, but she pulled him back down. You're not fine. Those are hairline fractures. You shouldn't fight with them. Or you may complicate a simple swelling even further. But he wasn't even looking at her. He was looking towards the old man, and she was also lying a bit about his arms, but the man was too strong. 
He would get worse injured if he went along with this. Sooner, let me go, he said, as he forcefully removed her hand from his wrist. Sokomo stopped her from trying to stop him anymore as he shook his head. The old man was smiling. You coming back for more? I didn't take you for being an idiot. As Naruto grin seemed to increase. As that caused the old man's smug smirk to decrease. As the boy faced and went completely calm. So calm that not even the old man could read it quite well. As Naruto rushed towards him in a blur. His right fist went for his chain but the man leaned back. He then swing once again as chain simply pulled back. As Naruto swiped to take the man's head off. But the man simply jumped back but Naruto was not having any of it. He wouldn't let it get out of his grasp. A roundhouse kick as the old man caught it. Naruto Sharingan flared to life. As he followed up with his left leg, he snaked around the man's neck to twist in a flexible maneuver. As his fingers clasped, he brought his fist down towards the man's skull. However, Chen seemed to just fall like someone had ripped out his spine. The man fell flat on the ground, caused Naruto to fall off him. As he rolled away and got back to his feet, Chen was quite impressed by the boy's skills. Even though he had quite a way to go before he can even think about beating him in a fight. After all, he was known as the best Taijutsu fighter in the elemental nation. However, this time Naruto got back up his style change as he dropped into the Uchiha interceptor fist style. As Shen's right leg made contact with the floor, his left arm came up. The man was now taking him seriously. Sakuma, what's that stance? That isn't what Mito Bachan taught him. Sits Nelly. Yeah. Naruto hasn't used this since our first spar in the academy. He changed it completely after that. But I guess he was mastering it. On his own. Along with the one that Mito Sama taught him. Sid Sakamo as Dai. Looked over in admiration for his friend. To think that he had been mastering not only one but two stances. That was a feat upon itself. And on top of that he was showing off his secret move. Just for his sake, tears start to leave Dai's eyes. Such youth, Shen rushed in this time. Brutal strikes the old man started to throw. However, Naruto was like a completely different person as he dodged and weave. And despite his Sharingan though, Naruto couldn't see a single opening in the man's stance. He was not only a Taijutsu expert, he was a master. The man was rumored to have Taijutsu powers greater than the five Kagis. As Naruto swing and dodge and swing and dodge, clashing against the old man. A few hours later, Naruto was on his knee, his hair shadowing his eyes. Sweat ran down like water. Shane's smile, a truly happy smile, with a child that had done his ancestors proud. The style had been long forgotten, people didn't even talk about it these days. But the child had been quite flexible and maneuver in it. Naruto stopped. It's enough, said Dai. Sakamo was barely holding himself back. As Naruto went through straight hours of enduring. As Naruto Sharingan was no longer active. He couldn't activate anymore. As he had to send chakra to his legs and hands to keep up with the man. Had it not been for the stamina train from Mito. He would have dropped two hours ago. Had you gone all out, you might have landed a hit child, said Chen. So you noticed, said Naruto. What? You were holding back? Said Sakamo in surprise. Why did you hold yourself back though? Chen asked. Curious to get the better of him. The child had impressed him. It has been years since someone impressed him. As Naruto Vision was losing focus, the adrenaline had worn off. I know my limits. His voice came out weak. Sneve had enough at sitting at the sidelines. As she rushed towards him but Chen, once he heard what Naruto said his eyes went wide. Sneve gushed over him looking at his bruised and tattered body. His forearms had turned a uh, faint blue from tanking all those hits. Hey, said Naruto as he looked at her with a smile. As he collapsed right on her shoulder, she held him up. Idiot, she said. Even after all of that, he still hadn't landed a single blow on that damn old cook. Shane stood behind her. A gentle smile on his face, the girl holding him. Like he was the most gentlest thing in the world right now. It didn't take a genius to see the love that she had for him. The child already noticed that I was far from his reach and he knew if he pushed himself he would have reached his endurance level before. The time had gone by, even in the rush of the battle and my taunts he still had the mind to properly strategize. 
That child is something else, alright, says Shane. As Shane walks up to take the boy from her to offer some of his natural healing ointments. But Sakamo gave him a look, don't he said. It was not that Sakamo was not telling to don't touch Naruto, it was because of. Well, Shane shrugged it off as he made his way. Snedi looked up towards him. The look that she gave him. A predatory dangerous look. Stay away from him, she said. Her voice cold and deadly. Shane's eyes softened though as he saw how beaten up. The boy truly was. No wonder the girl was angry. And now he understands why that kid tried to stop him. She would have lashed out if he took another step. Senjus and Uchiha's were rarely angry. Truly angry. But the girl was downright furious now. Snedley loosened her grip as she leaned root on her back and picked him up piggyback style. As his cheek rested on her shoulder, she gave Sakamo and Dai a sorry look for leaving like this. But they understood. As the two boys follow suit, having nothing remaining here anyways. Come back tomorrow for your first lesson. As they stop mid-step. And I'm sorry for my behavior to you, Shane said. Sakamo shook his head in amusement as he pulled Dai out before. He started to hug the man before the man. Take back his lessons. Time skip. Uzumaki compound. I'm coming, said Mito. As someone was banging on the door. As she saw her apprentice on Snelly's back. As she saw the tear in Snelly's eyes. Batching, heal him, she whispered. As she barely pulled back the sobbing voice. Mito's eyes softened on hearing her a little sniff. As she motioned her to come in into the room. Where she had gave Naruto some years ago. As she lay him down on the futon. As Mito went to get a towel to wipe off. The child, Snelly sat beside him. He was still smiling though. No doubt he enjoyed that brutal assault back then. Idiot, she said once again. Despite being knocked down every time he kept on getting back up. He was determined of course. But he just kept on getting back up no matter what. The idiot was just too damn stubborn for his own good sometimes. However, she wouldn't have him any other way. As her hand reached out and cuffed his cheek. She didn't know what was going on as she leaned down. As her lips hovered over his own. As she moved in closer nearly. Pursing her lips over his own. Alright, Mito voice cut through the room. As she came in to see Snelly, her cheeks were red and she was stiff. Is something wrong, Snelly? But the girl rushed past her side. Mito blinked a few times. Before she sat down and started to heal the child, her granddaughter could be so. It was then that she saw the pink lipstick against Naruto's cheek, right near his lips. Her eyes softened as she giggled. She now understood. Looks like I disturbed her. Oh young love, she giggled. As she wiped Naruto's cheek, she wouldn't let her know that she saw. She didn't want to embarrass her. However, she did like to tease her though. Nah, she wouldn't do that. She was falling for him. A boy that would be worthy to claim her heart in the future. She would be a fine man for a little snatty. After all, she had practically raised him in these past few years. When the two of them already embraced their feelings, Toburama would definitely throw a fit. Oh, the joys of watching, Mito thought to herself. Time skip. Back with Toburama and Sasuke. Hokage Dano, it's such a pleasure that you've made it all the way here. The Raikage greeted warmly. Not that it fooled either man. Both Sasuke and Toburama narrowed their eyes. As they looked towards the buffed up man in front of them. How could we have refused such a warm invitation, Sasuke said. His voice stern and cold. The Raikage smile slipped. Before it returned as he started to laugh. Like they had just cracked a joke of a century. Where are they? Toburama said. His voice was deadly calm. Look in his eyes. Would have made a lesser man drop to his knees and pissed himself. Ah, you must mean our two guests. They are back in the forest. Under the watch of my finest Jonins. Toburama hide all hints of happiness that he was feeling on the inside. However, Sasuke wasn't as hype as Toburama. Something just wasn't clicking right. Something was off. And it was rubbing him the wrong way. But he remained silent. It was too late for any retreats. Not that none of them were going to run anyway. Shall I escort you to them? Toburama nodded curtly. As Sasuke could see that he was not thinking straightly. His emotions were clouding his mind. Sasuke eyed the two guards of the Raikage. As one stepped in front of him. They were in a three point triangle. As he held himself back for Toburama's sake. As they walked. 
The Jonin glanced towards his leader before he looked ahead with a smirk. The Reich had yet a bloodthirsty smile and he knew the reason why. A few minutes later, how much longer Sasuke acts as he kept on walking through the forest. We're almost there, the warm voice of the Raikage said. As he kept on moving, Toburamo was stern as he walked. There was no trees around when they entered the clearing, only a single pine tree. There they are, the Raikage said. Sasuke's heart skipped a bit as his eyes focused on the small patch of grass. The grass patch had turned black. His fists clenched so tight that blood started to drip. Where are they? Tobarama says he looked around. Why well, they're in front of you, Lord Hokage. As the man pointed his finger to the top of the tree, the right Hage turned to see that look that he has been waiting for, for a week, no scratch at, for years now. As Tobarama face lost all sense of emotion, Misa and Ruku were tied to the top branch. With bog wires clenched around their wrists, their clothes were in tatters, cuts, bruises, sign of physical torture, discoloration of skin, most likely poison torture. Bloody streaks ran down the tree, dripping for coming no whole long. Toburama, you look after my children, alright? You're the only one I trust your life with. Mito is just too much like me to be considered as reliable as you. And we both know that. The voice and laughter of Hoshirama went through his mind. The flashback of Roku childhood, when the boy was younger, the boy that he saw as his own son, to the point where he had married Misa, and they had Snevi. It flashed through his mind within seconds. For the first time in decades, his eyes start to brim with tears. The memory of a tired wheat Nissa in the hospital bed flashed through his mind, his daughter in all but blood, holding that small bundle in her arms. Her name is Nelly. The warm feeling that he felt when he took that bundle away from her. Hoshirama crying in the corner as Mito held him down with her chains, so he wouldn't be the first one to hold her, was the funniest, fondest memory he had in his mind. Of his brother, of his entire family being there, the dam broke as tears flowed down his cheeks. He had failed. He failed his brother. He failed Mito. He failed Misa and Roku. But above all else, he failed Snathi and Nowaki. How could he stand in front of her, showing her how poorless he was while he buried her parents in front of her eyes? How would he tell Nawaki when the toddler asked where was his mommy and daddy and when were they coming back home? Ha! Finally I'd done what countless others had failed to do before me. The right I didn't laugh as he saw the tears from Toburama's chin wet in the grass. I have broken the iron will off. The second Okage the man that is said to have no, absolutely no emotions, crying in front of us like a pathetic infant due to the fruit of my efforts. Finally, he realized his place. Toburama collapsed to his knees with the last of the man's words. The two Jonin shot forward to restrain Toburama. However, the both of them were thrown away. The ground exploded. Violent, violent, powerful waves of purple chakra exploded out of Toburama. Sasuke turned toward his friend. His expression had changed violently. He had been his friend for more than three decades now, and he has never seen Toburama this angry. But right now he was beyond angry, or even furious. The man was livid. The insane amount of bloodlust that he released made the three teams shiver where they were. The aura of the man made them feel like they were back in their genuine days once again. He was showing those pathetic Jonins over there hiding, the difference between their strength and the difference between Akagi. Tuburama hand raised the right Kagi and the man behind him leap away. As he gripped the armor and squeezed it like it was made from some weak broken material. Even though it was powerful, as he made the armor at his shoulder fall, as he tore apart the other end, as he reached and pulled his blade out, yellow lightning exploded outwards as it circled Tuburama. 
with each and every breath of his movements, his chakra kept on spiking. His hair started to spike. I swear, he said. Sasuke gulped softly, he had forgotten how poor the Tobirama was. After years of the two remaining silent, especially if his opponents ever truly riled him up, but these fools have woken up the beasts. On the blood of my ancestors and forefathers that run through my veins, on the honor as I send you, not one of you. As he pointed his blade towards Raikagi, who looked towards him furiously, and I mean none of you will leave this place alive. Sasuke released his own chakra, as it seemed to be on the same level, although not exactly there, but just close enough to Tobirama, as the ground underneath him crack, his body covered by the blue cloak. You will all wish for death by the time I'm done with you. Mark my words, for they shall be your last. Sasuke also unclipped his chest plate and threw it aside. Those will only get into their way today. They were not here to stall, they were not here to run, they were here to slaughter. The Raikage was instantly on guard seeing the power that the man was showing right in front of his eyes. However on the inside the Raikage was furious, livid, words weren't enough to f tell the amount of contempt that he had in his heart at the moment. His plan had been perfect, he had broken the will of the Iron Senju. All he had to do was finish him off while he was off guard. He was on his knees for Kami's sake. But these idiots that he called his precious elite Jonins didn't even know how to execute a proper assassination fluidly. And they were the best that he had to offer if the other nations saw this. It would be a laughing matter as he glared at the man that he loaded with his very being. Toburama Senju, how he hated that name as he blinked. But that was a mistake that he made. Upon blinking, Toburama was gone. The only person that stood there was Sasuke. What the hell? As he heard gurgling, the two ninjas that tried to take him down had the blade of the Raijin. One of them had it through his throat, and the other one had a kunai directly in his skull as he ripped out his pot weapons. As their bodies fell, seconds, that was all it took to extinguish two of Kumo top elite Jonins. And not to mention in the presence of the Raikage and several other of Kumo finest, realization started to seep into the Raikage eyes. Take him down, he barked out. As all hell broke loose, Toburama flashed back to the marker. Right beside Sasuke, almost instantaneously, his companion was the only one that noticed him place the Irishian marker on the tree while they were entering the clearing. He was out of his senses, not his reflexes. After years upon years in life and death situations, it had become like an instinct to place markers. However, this was the first time that he placed it in a trance like state. It was like a muscle memory by now. How many Sasuke said as he saw a leaf flickering? 13 and him. Toburama said. Sasuke nodded as Rakagi covered himself in black lightning, his most dangerous technique in his arsenal. Leave the outsiders to me. You take down the Raikage and that lone joining with him. Sasuke went to flick out a kunai but Toburama gave him a sharp glance. As the Senju blurred through Hansen and he understand the message. Rumble, the ground. Sasuke hands came up and went through Hansen's that were too fast for anyone except for a dojo to use her to see. As he slammed his hand together. Earth style. As he slammed his palm on the ground. Terraformer, he said. And much like what Toburama said the ground. The ground did rumble. The whole thing started to fall apart, as an earthquake was set off, as a large piece of earth spiked up to crush the Jonin and the Raikage but they were fast enough to leap away. Sasuke chakra output though it increased, the ground started to shape more violently and the effects were instant. The whole firmness of the ground shattered in mere moments in around 500 meters webs start to appear webs of crack appearing spreading outwards and the whole place was destroyed the grassy way made way for the massive chunk of earth that shot up and tore apart everything the trees all around including the ones that the clone ninjas were hiding in were torn and ripped apart after a 30 second sasuke let the jutsu down the whole place was a pile of rubble now like a chain of landmines that went off 
The Raikage threw away the large boulder that he held back. As he looked around, as he saw Ishinobis coming out, all of that and not even a single hit. The Raikage scowl was that just for show. Whoever said it was for offense. The voice of Sasuke said. The Raikage snapped his head to size he saw Tobirama. His legs spread apart, his hands slammed together. His eyes were shut as a massive, violent typhoon of water swirled around him in a deadly capacity. His eyes then snapped open as the waters slammed together and created a massive tidal wave. It then split in all different directions to skewer their enemy. The right tag and his companions quickly dodged all of those tentacles, but three of his other Jonin, who were still quite dazed from Sasuke's technique, was unable to do. The water tentacle threw itself into them and teared through the other side. No red, mixed with their blood and their organs. Shouts of the man named to get out of the way was heard but they failed to do so as they were skewered. Their bodies dropping like a sack. The rest that were lucky enough to move watched as the water splashed down into the sections. Each pathway was now filled with water. The right Hage glared his two opponents as he now understood their collaboration technique. It had been thoroughly planned out from the very beginning and those accursed bastards planned it and pulled it off perfectly right in front of his goddamn eyes. Toborama burst of chakra was only meant to intimidate its opponent, to make them hesitate at the show of power. Then he killed off two of his Jonins to show them that their plan was backfiring and then flashed back towards his friend. And then Sasuke had to go and show off. A ninja like his caliber didn't need to shout his jutsus, thereby sending his man in a state of panic as he had thrown the largest boulder towards the right Kage and he had to push it away. And his subordinates lost their mind on seeing the sense of the destruction that he was wreaking, not even realize it was a decoy to just daze them and cut off their sense of surroundings. And the second executor being Toborama himself. It gave him time to concentrate and gather all the water that he needed to pull from the ear around him. And then he let loose and skewer his day shinobis, killing them while they were distracted and baffled. And now the water sources all around. They serve as a good way for him to get water. As the Raikage grumbled, he was more than enough pissed off right now. Their plan went off perfectly right underneath his nose and he wasn't able to do a damn thing about it. He was left with a squadron that was cut down, while the rest lay injured. And the environment now fit what the two wanted in the first place. A smart shinobi is always mindful of their surroundings. Academy Awareness 101, said Sasuke. As the Raikage clenched his teeth so tight, they threatened to nearly burst. But, the cold, deadly voice of Toborama said, A legendary shinobi is one that turned the surrounding to suit his needs for when time called for it. You bastards! I'll kill you with the Raikage yell! He vanished in a black flicker of lightning as he was moving straight towards Toborama to cleave his head clean off. Toborama blade flickered instantaneously. Toborama gripped the blade tightly at the fist, slammed into it. He stuck his foot in the ground as he was pushed back, showing the amount of strength the Raikage possessed. Now you're mine, the Raikage says he raised his free fist as he was about to break down the sword and that man who made his life a living hell for the past couple of years. However, his hand ripped apart the ground as his fist was torn into the earth as Toborama had vanished in thin air and appeared by the tree that he had marked where he had killed his first two men. On purpose, Toborama stomped on the head of the man, on the headband. The Raikage eyes went bloodthirsty as Toborama was showing him how far beneath the cloud was the leaf village. With each step, the Raikage killer intent increased exponentially. He was taunting him, mocking him. Him. Lightning release. Electromagnetic murder. Toborama ducked under lightning. However, the man was not done. Lightning release. 16 pillar bind. Suddenly four beams of pillar came out of the lightning down. And they surrounded him. Concentrating pure raw electricity on four sides. Rendering him paralyzed. Now you're mine, the right tiger says he rushed in. Moving through his technique, his body surrounded by black lightning. Lariat! As his hand tore through Toborama's neck. 
Splash! The right target eyes went wide as Toberama burst into water. Substitution, he growled. A scream could be heard behind the Raikage. The Jonin who had not left. The Raikage side from the beginning had a blade tore through his chest. The yellow tip being shown clearly as the blood was eviscerated by the lightning. Toberama pulled out his blade and kicked the body away as it crashed into one of the broken stones. Slash! Slash! As Toberama didn't even move, Two of the ninjas that tried to restrain him a moment ago got skewered straight through their bodies by massive earth pillars. Courtesy from Sasuke. As blood poured out of them, they shouldn't have taken their eyes off Sasuke. However, Toberama's side was bleeding a bit because of the electricity. One of the pillars that came down quickly slashed them. Sasuke smirked as he stood beside Toberama, only for a slice. Toberama sliced his head clean off. As the body poofed to reveal a transformed ninja. Next time you try to transform into Sasuke, don't grin. Sasuke never grinned, not doing a battle. As he turned to see the real Sasuke coming, his clothing was a bit tattered and he was walking with a limp hole in his side. But he was relatively fine. And then there was one, said Saratobi. As he looked towards the Raikage, Toberama looked towards Sasuke as he saw the gashes. They had a Genjutsu user in their ranks. The bastard was a sensor and a Kinjutsu user. As he applied pressures to his wound to slow down the bleeding, Toberama stood there. As he looked at the Raikage, he was a bit too calm for someone who lost all of his men. Wait, all of his men? They were 15 level, Jonin Chalker signatures, and 3 Kage level, the Raikage being one of them, which means Toberama had no time to yell to shout or warning as his body moved ignoring his agony at his side. As a strange broad blade slashed where he was with a strange talisman on the end of it. He breathed a bit easily as he saw that Sasuke had dodged as well from his supposed attacker. As the both of them skipped backwards and looked towards their attacker, Sasuke had dodged a fist with a strange glowing thing wrapped around the arm. Ginkaku, do it. Sasuke attacker shouted out. The one that attacked Toberama rushed forward at blinding speeds. The man brought his sword down towards Sasuke to take off his head, as if he would get hit by that slow attack. But the... He clenched his throat, as a blue translucent cloud came from his mouth. Genkiko slashed the blue cloud, as he got absorbed into his blade. She is in Kaiken curse, Genkiko said with a laugh. Sasuke felt nothing wrong with his body. They were already laughing like he was already dead. What the hell did- And clasped his mouth shut rather instantly. Don't say a word, said Toberama. Sasuke nodded his head. You are cursed, Sasuke. They put it on you just now. Do exactly as I say and you will be fine. Sasuke nodded as Toberama racked his mind. He had knowledge of their weapons. The tools belonged to the seed of Six Path himself. They were revered enough to attract his attention and probe him to garner enough knowledge about them, but he had only scoured so much. In the ancient writing it said that can only be used by someone of his master blood, which meant in some way these two idiots were related to the father of all chakra. He heard rumors of Kuma possessing the Amber Exorcism Bottle that they had used to capture the Rampage in Haxabi after their failed attempt to capture the Kyubi once before. This solidified those rumors, they possessed not one but five of the six tools from the sage, with four of them knowing actions right in front of him. Not much was known about their abilities, but from what he saw he cleaved off Sasuke before moving back. He could make some assumptions. The tool used some sort of sealing technique, a cursed sealing technique, so it probably had something to do with his voice or words, but that was just an assumption. Still Sasuke had spoken a few words before and nothing happened. Sasuke say my surname, and only my surname. Nothing less, nothing more. Sasuke nodded as he felt Toberama nervousness. If anyone could know more about that curse, it was him. Senju. Sasuke breathed a sigh of relief when nothing happened to him. As he seemed to be walking in the correct path. But this curse seemed to have something to do with his voice. What did you do to him? He had to buy as much time as possible to gather information. Both Ginkiku and Kinkiku laughed hysterically. 
No, that would be telling, said Ginkaku. Yeah, after all, silence is rather golden, said Ginkaku. As Ginkaku laugh increased, yeah, after all, words can be so eloquent, Ginkaku said. You damn idiot, stay serious for once. I want that bastard dead. Do not let that damn send you out of here alive. The Raikage roared. Hey boss, don't worry. These two are dead men already. The Raikage half a mind to attack them. But they were right. With the tools and the secret, they wouldn't be leaving this place alive. Tobaram and Nardi's eyes on Silver One. It's pointed joke that made the Golden One laugh harder. Silence is golden. Silence is golden. Silence is... A bolt went off in his mind. No, he understood what piqued his interest in that joke. They were implying that Sasuke had to stay silent to stay alive. Because he glanced at him when he had said that. It had something to do with silence. Words can be so eloquent. What did he mean by that? Tobrama racked his brain for an answer. Eloquent. That idiot was being rather cryptic. Which meant choose your words wisely while staying silent. Wait, that's it. As he deciphered them. Silence is a key but words. Must be chosen carefully. Both brothers eyes went wide. They had given everything away by accident. You could never trifle with the mind of Tobarama Senju. Sasuke. Only say Senju. Every 60 seconds. Do not say silent for more than that. And whatever happens don't say anything else. Call me out and use hand signs to communicate. You get me. Do not say anything else no matter what. Sasuke nodded as the enemies were livid. I'll go for the Raikage, you go for the idiotic. Looking too. Genkaku and Kinkaku, bristling anger not only had he deciphered their technique, yet he was dismissing them and calling them fools. It angered them to no end as they rushed into attack the Senju. Earth style, Earth Dragon Bullet. Sasuke thought of his jutsu instead of saying it out loud. Tobrama vanished. The Raikage moved just in time though to dodge a slash that tore through his black lightning. However, he was able to move away as his forearms start to glow. Elbow he yelled as he spun around. However, Tobra vanished. The Raikage turned as he knew exactly where he would come. Lightning release. Reverse lit. Tobra's eyes almost bulged out. As the lightning charged heel made contact with his wounded side as he had to bite the inside of his mouth to stop the stream from escaping as he was thrown. His body tore through, leaving a gash trench as he blinked unfocused his eyes, showing him cobwebs all around. His wounds felt numb, much to his relief and annoyance. It meant that it was wounded so deeply that his brain was in shock from the pain alone. But the pain was the only thing keeping him conscious from the death blow that he took, twice now head on. As he coughed, he coughed up blood. The Raikage walked towards the down form of the Hokage. That bastard had slashed through his back. But his momentum paid off. He knew exactly where he would show up in that moment. And he got a square deadly hit which he had sent. A dose. A dose of his power into that attack. That should knock him down for a while. Tobarama had fallen. As his eyes light up in joy. As he looked towards the fallen blade. An idea formed his head. To be killed by your own blade, he smirked. As the electricity of the black lightning had pumped through Tobirama's wound, leaving him a bit paralyzed. However, he could feel the sensation in his fingers and coming back in his neck. He screamed though as a raging blade pierced right above his heart to make him die slow and agonizing in pain. However, Tobirama was quite glad for the new wound. His eyes snapped back into focus as a pain jolted his system. His lips pursed together like he was about to whistle. Water style. As Raikage stepped on his wound. Water Senbon. It flew from his mouth. The Raikage was enjoying himself with glee. The Raikage scream and roar. My eyes, he yelled. As he clutched his eye socket in pain. He had been overconfident and dropped his guard. When he should have ended Tobrama with a single strike, but no, he was too cocky. As Tobrama saw the Raikage reaching out to find him, move, move, come on, damn it, move! He yelled to his body, move! He yelled. But guys, be insta right here. If you want the next part to do, 
Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as they posted. Remember, share all of your friends in social media platform. And also, guys, stay in tune for the rest of the what ifs coming away. I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them, but for now, I'm out of here, guys. See you guys soon. Peace, guys.